Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 788, with today's guest, Coach Jeff Amoy. I'm Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host here for the show, and I've been doing martial arts my whole life, just about my whole life. Only a few years, actually, as I record this, coming up on a pretty significant anniversary for my training. But the point is, I love martial arts, and I love martial artists, and that's why I have put my entire life into this company. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for coming by. And thank you for being part of our mission to connect, educate, and entertain traditional martial artists of the world. We give away our absolute best stuff, like this podcast. So if you like what we do, maybe you want to help us out. Maybe you want to grab something at whistlekick.com with the code podcast15. Maybe you want to leave a review or a rating somewhere. Maybe you want to join our Patreon, P A T R E O N.com slash whistlekick. Two bucks a month gets you behind the scenes. Who's coming up on the show? It's the only place we tell you. Five dollars a month gets you bonus episodes. Ten dollars gets you bonus video training methodologies. And it goes up from there. We work very hard to make sure that our Patreon contributors, and I thank all of you, we do not name them, remain. That you continue to find such overwhelming value that you wouldn't dream of leaving. And we do a pretty good job of that. Now, if you want to go deeper on the show, if you say, you know, Jeremy, I'm new to this stuff, welcome. Maybe you want to start at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com where we put all kinds of stuff up for this podcast. Did you know you can download, just copy paste transcripts? Did you know you could search those transcripts right from the website? You can get the links and the photos, all the things we talk about during the episodes. There's a lot over there. Go check it out. And if you are our biggest fan, if you are family, if you are aligned in our mission to connect, educate, and entertain, and you resonate with our goal to get everyone in the world to train for even six months, then you should probably be at our family page, whistlekick.com slash family. We intentionally don't like it. We want you to jump through that little hoop because we give you some good stuff in exchange for you coming and checking out all the things you can do to help us in our mission. We're not going to cram it down your throat. You've got to You've got to open the door yourself. Now, today's episode with Coach Jeff Amoy is a lot of fun. We're talking about some interesting stuff and some female-centric stuff, which, let's face it, I am not female. So when we have guests on who are fighting hard for female martial artists and some inclusion, I really dig those conversations. I had fun today. I think Jeffa did too. And yeah, here we go. Check it out. Hi. Okay. Welcome. Great. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So we're going to talk a lot about a lot of different things today. We're going to talk about a lot of different things today. We'll, and, and you're going to drive. You're going to decide where we go and how we get there. But we need a place to start. So let's start with this. Why did you start training? I love that question. That's the easiest one. <laughs> I, I'm, so, I'm glad I gave you an easy one to start. All right. So I started training because at the time I was a single mom. I had moved into an apartment complex that seemingly was normal. But once I moved mm. in, it was a little bit rough. And, you know, again, like I'm a newly single mom. So my I have a baby baby. It's always got to be in my mm. arms. She's not walking or following me anywhere. And um, I just had to take into consideration that at some point in between doing my groceries or whatever, there's gonna be my car doors open, my house doors open, and I'm gonna be you know, mindful of a child probably in my arm. I'm gonna have like another whole rack of uh, groceries on my arm. So you know, I'm, I'm pretty stuck and I'm pretty vulnerable. Also, mm. I, I'm a small person, so I look like an easy target, even though mm. I end up being a firecracker. You know, it is what it is. So, I, I was, you know, conscious of that. And also too, like, I'm thinking what, what within my groceries is available and it's my legs. And also as a mm. female, uh, we're dominant with our, our hip strength. Our lower half is just, you know, you guys, men get to be strong on top, women get to be strong on the bottom. So taking those into uh, consideration, I ended up doing uh, self-defense classes at Krav Maga. I dated a dude that did kickboxing. He's like, you look like you would be really great for that. And I, I kind of like fell in love with the kickboxing aspect of it. Um, and it just went from like a, 
you know, oh, I, I'm doing all this stuff and and I get into the Krav Maga classes. They're just like, oh, you're such a natural. And, you know, that did come from me doing cheerleading growing up. Mm. And, uh, you know, then everyone, oh, are you ever going to be in the UFC? Talking about this Gracie gym. And I ended up visiting Gracie, starting jujitsu. And from there, I had no idea that it would take over my life the way that it did just from me wanting <laughs> to be able to defend myself as a mom. Love it. So. Now there's something you brought up in your your easy answer that I don't I don't maybe it's easy for you but it's not common and that's the awareness piece. Most people pre-training don't have a lot of awareness of their own vulnerability. Wh where did that come from for you? How were you aware of your vulnerability when so many people aren't? Um I think that just came from my father raised me well. He raised me smart. Mm. I grew up with an older brother who was kicking my ass all the time. So, <laughs> I mean, just like common sense. But at the same time, you know, I started getting into, you know, the Bruce Lee always kind of stood out to me just as like an artist, you know, because he had his whole like mentality side of the martial arts that I was actually, uh, I brought me into him first. Um, and he just says, you know, like, you essentially, people walk around, especially these days with the fact that we have our phones, we're always in our phones. People are crossing the road, walking to Walmart or whatever yeah. store they're going to, still looking at their phones. And that's such an, that's such an easy target, you know? And, and Bruce Lee talks about like always knowing your awareness, like always being aware of everything that's around you, whether you're, you're looking this way, you still know what's going on to the sides of you, behind you, you go into a, a public place, you go into a restaurant, you have to know where the exits are. You have to know, you know, where's the broom so I can use that as a weapon if something happens or, you know what I'm saying? Like, so at, right. like at this point, you start kind of like sizing people up, even though you're not, you don't feel threatened or anything. It's just like, I enter a room and I already know kind of, I size up people. I know my, my exits. I know you're my preaching to the weapons. choir on this show. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and every, everybody, you know, everybody in the audience now is, is similar in that respect. For sure. But I mean, that should be that to me, you know, learning about it and reading about it should be so so much of a common sense that it even boils down to like, yo, what up, cops? Why are you not training kind of thing? Like everybody should be a secret little ninja if you want to if you want to survive in this world. Yeah. It's like it's it's a it's crazy out there. It's always been it's always going to be no matter how hard we try. But the best thing that we can do is be our own weapon. I love that. Oh, that's it. That's it. Perfect. Here, I'm even going to write that down. We, we pull quotes from the episode. <laughs> that one's yeah. that one's going on. Now, you, you said something, and, and this isn't me attacking you. You said something that's a little bit contradictory, and, and I suspect that that's because there's more there. So that's why I'm going to pick at it a little bit. You talked about if you're getting the groceries, your feet are available. And so Krav Maga, kickboxing, makes sense. Gracie Jiu-Jitsu not so much of a kicking art. So how do we go from lower body strength and <laughs> hips and kicks while my arms are carrying a baby in grocery bags to, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get on my back and choke you out. So like I said, that was definitely not my first choice. And right. it was very, it was absolutely uncomfortable. I, I don't know how I fell in love with it and I can see, and I think that's why I work so hard to express what, how it's so important is because yeah, I show up to a jujitsu class and you want me to get on top of this stranger and act like I don't have personal boundaries. Like what, eh. what, what made you, what made you go in the first place? Um, it, my brother was kind of like pushing toward it. And a lot of people, okay. you know, I, I worked at a nutritional place and I had a lot of the Gracie guys coming in shopping and, Oh, you should try mm. it. And like, again, like, so with your question, let's be real here. If I'm getting, if somebody is charging me or coming to harm me, we're not squaring up. We're eventually going to get down. Like I, a guy doesn't want to come up and like box me. He wants to come up and approach me and, and get on top of me. You know, uh, most of the times that's what it is. It, you know, like sure. if you want to be real, they're not, they're not pickpocketing me. Uh, right. So, so being able to understand close contact combat is like almost more important than the mm -hmm. physical like yeah i can try to kick you all day and you know that's a, a whole different side and a whole different topic about how that's beneficial but again let's be real i'm going to be in, in a, a close range issue a problem if somebody is attacking me and so that's where 
learning how to choke people or hand fight or, you know, strategically exit within that like two to five second time frame of being able to get your way and, and get the hell out of there. So you were aware of the, the, the hole in your game, so to speak, maybe yes. reluctantly or skeptically or cautiously you step in at, at what, how quickly did it take over your life? Like immediately, it was one of those things Day where one. I was that, yeah, I was that girl wow. that got in there and and there was no females in that gym. They all like I like it was a mat full of sweaty men and I walked through the door and they're all like fresh knees kind of thing and I'm like ah but like I knew in my head how important it was how dedicated like I was like I I want to do this it's important if I want to you know learn the full game this is gonna be good for me so yeah. you know it it was it was definitely scary. <laughs> But it's it's just one of those things that like I I was the girl that was on the mat with a knee brace I was knee brace girl at the time I guess it was not cool to come when come in with your injuries, <sighs> but uh, it was just like I I remember the first move that I learned was a triangle and I just couldn't get it but the part of like learning how to uh, like the technique of a triangle kind of got me I guess and I'm like like I can do this I I don't know I can do this. You liked the puzzle. I, yeah. And I'm not even like, a, I, I guess I, I am sort of like a puzzle chick. We got puzzles of Tetris all over this room. But I just, I don't know. I was not expecting that. Kicking and punching is so kind of like pow, pow. Jiu-Jitsu is kind of like, hmm, which is the different, you know, aspect yeah. mentally. It, it certainly uh, attracts, often attracts a different personality type, you know, we, we've had plenty of people from all sorts of martial arts on this show. But one of the things that I hear quite often from the folks who, especially if they start in something else and they end up pivoting or adding some manner of grappling, they appreciate the intellectual piece, you know, especially when you get to a point and, and, and I've done very little grappling, but I, I like being able to do it at a really chill level, like really slow, really light, and figuring it out, I appreciate that that puzzle. It's like, all right, so my, my arm's about to break here. What can I do? Oh, I could do this, right? And that's that's fun. And actually, I, I take some of that into stand-up as well. When you say it took over your life, and when you say it was immediately, what did that look like? What what is what is your life being a jujitsu life look like? So it was one of those things that I, like I said, I'm a very outgoing person. I'm a firecracker. Mm -hmm. I'm at, at the time working for a nutritional place. I'm also going to school to learn about nutrition. So essentially like, like my journey began with wanting to connect the, the mind with the, what we put in our body and sure. how those things go. So, you know, of course, all of this starts branching out. And, and so I can't help but to talk about it. And I'm like, oh, this is so cool, blah, blah, blah. I'm posting, I'm a social girl, so I'm on social media, like, oh, pow, pow, today. And it's intriguing to other people that, you know, one, that this little tiny girl can do all of these re really cool things and get so interested. And then two, I'm good at it. <laughs> um, but that attracted people to come into the gym. And finally, the, uh, the owner of that gym at the time, Rob Khan, bust through these intro doors and was like, who's Jeffa? And I'm like, ah, not me. Like, I don't know. Should I be scared? What did I do wrong? And he pulled me to the side and he's like, you have been getting so many people to sign up to my gym. I want you to work for me. So I was like, that was such a crazy, awesome opportunity. Mm. And um, it was cool to be recognized as someone that's like bringing people in. Like, I, I love this so much. I'm so passionate about it that it's easy to be like, you must join me. What, what, what were you telling them? What are you telling these people that got them to come in just again with like how how much mental game like you know oft, often people want to sign up for gym type things because they want to lose weight and i'm like bro this is the best workout ever and you don't even know that you're working out there's no effort you you don't even know that you're there for an hour burning this amount of calories and like there's so, so many cool people that you're going to meet there and 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 i don't mm. know just like it, it just was one of those things i'm like Ah, the workout, the the mindset, everything is so cool. The energy to go there is like you're gonna leave there feeling better about yourself. And like, isn't that what we all want? <laughs> yeah. Now I'm I'm curious, and I'll I'll tell you why after. You said that when you started, you were the only woman in the class. Right. Were you bringing in 
women as well? Or was it, you know, more, as you said, sweaty dudes? Well, that's, that's the origin of Chick Titsu. So there were like two other chicks that were going there at the time that I didn't really have the same schedule as them. So I mm, definitely okay. never got to be like on their page. Um, but I started bringing in more chicks. And then at the time I was also a personal trainer. So they allowed me once I started working there to bring my, you know, my people there, they would, sure. I would teach them a little bit of you know, the kickboxing and if they wanted some jujitsu, but then they'd start seeing the classes. And mm. so, yeah, yeah, that's that. Okay. So what is chick jitsu? So chick jitsu is essentially, like I said, how, how it happened there. It was just one of those things that I, we, I brought up like, oh, could I possibly do a women's class? And so we essentially added a women's class onto that schedule and it was bringing, we had like, Two hour sessions every Sunday. It was a banger. It was so awesome. So like, I still have the girls telling me now, like, oh, I miss those days. I'm like, I miss hanging out because it was so much fun. And at the same time, they're they're getting a good workout. They're getting like a good friendship with other females, and uh, they're learning self defense. They're learning how to protect themselves without even knowing. Because essentially, all it is is repetition. The more that you do it, the more that it's just commonly going to come out of you if something happens. Somebody grabs your arm, and you're like, what? Bam! They're they're going to be a little bit shocked, statistically proven. If you put up a little bit of a fight, they're going to think twice. And that's exactly what you want in a, in a bad situation. That's what chick jitsu is. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love it. But if, they, you know, I, I've, now I, I don't know the answer. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you, I'm giving you commercial time here in a sense. You're wearing the shirt still. Your, if I remember correctly, your Instagram handle is Chick Jitsu. Did Chick Jitsu continue in some way other than a Sunday class? So yeah, I I went to other gyms. I I did seminars for you know uh, different workplaces for their women and so on and so forth. Uh, once I started working over at Gracie Brandon in uh, Riverview, Florida, I met Lou, who is my partner in Chick Jitsu. Uh, and he saw me teaching these classes. He has a daughter of his own. So, um, and, and my daughter and her became like best friends and it was just so great. But uh, he brought the idea of making Chick Jitsu a tournament. And I'm like, mm. yeah, you know, I've seen, I've seen people like have this idea and it's never really successful because it is, get, it is hard getting chicks to sign up for events. Um, so it would definitely be a task. It would, it would be a task for the very, very perfect person. And I was like, I'm so game to try to make that happen. You know, it was just one of those things that he is really good at seeing a good opportunity. And I, I'm like, bro, I am so down to try to make, I'm for it because that would be the best thing that we could do for girls in, in tournaments. Like to have a girl on a card is like, oh, wow. It's a, it's a girl on a card. To have a full card of women, we have 15 super fights coming up and two absolutes with plenty of chicks in there. So, like, that's almost unheard of. Mm -hmm. It is unheard of. And I did it. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Anytime somebody does something difficult, and as, as you're talking about, and anybody pull any, any MMA fight card, pro, am, I don't care. I don't care where it is. I don't care what it is. I don't care what the rules are. You're going to see at the most I've ever seen out of like 10 is three women. So for you to do this and to find success with this, whether or not you were the perfect person, I can't imagine it was simple. Can't imagine that you just like, oh, all right, I got this, you know, and it just happened. You worked at it. But anytime somebody works at something that's really hard, they have a compelling why. What was your why? Why was this so important to you? Um, pretty much the, the opener of what we've been talking about. Like I came here with a purpose to share self-defense with specifically women. Like I had to do it for myself and I want to give that to my daughter. I want to give that to somebody else's daughter. I want to give that to everybody in the world. And, you know, people get on, oh, you, so you don't teach men. I do, but my my purpose, my purpose is that I'm talking to little baby Jeffa. I'm talking to little me in, you know, in awkward situations or in bad situations growing up. Who who would I have needed? And I want to be that person for me. I want to be that person for my kid. 
I want to be that person for the whole wide world. And Chick Chick is just one of those things that I have a, a bigger opportunity to reach out to so many different people, bring them together. And I'm, I'm not the only one doing big things. And the women that are going to be in, in the room of, of Chick Jitsu are going to be more people that are as energetic and inspired and, and passionate about this same stuff. And to bring all of that together starts a really, really big fire. And I think that it's going to do, I, I don't think that I know that we are doing big things. I know that every single time a Chick Jitsu happens, something else bigger happens for the world of females in combative sports and, and for their safety. That's, it's huge. Mm, love it. Now, the other flip side, I guess, of people doing big things is inevitably you get people who don't want to see people do big things. And sadly, it is uh, not common, uh, maybe, maybe even a little less common than uncommon, but it's not a zero. There are some people who don't like seeing women move forward in martial arts and so the the look on your face tells me that you you might have had some some hurdles now i'm not asking you to name names but you mind telling us about some of those hurdles that might have popped up i mean i can definitely say that the hurdles that happen are they can happen from people that you thought you knew a little bit better people that you have competed against that you're like i've competed against you hop in this tournament and they're like no and it's like, dang, okay, I don't understand why, but all right. And you have men out there that are going to try to sabotage you in any possible way that they can. And a lot of a lot of times it's it's more so just like saying bad things about not even me, but just like, you know, oh, what a what a dumb idea, or I would have done this, or you know, mm. not supporting me the way that you would support someone else. And you're just sitting there like, man, I, I thought that. I don't understand why you wouldn't want to help me out or mm -hmm. I don't know. It happens without, I mean, I'm not trying to sit here and like name out people, but it's just, no, no, naturally, I'm not asking you to, it's, it just naturally comes to people to be like, that's really tough. I'm not going to support that. Or I think more so I'm not going to support that yet. I'm going to mm -hmm. see, I don't, I don't necessarily, I'm not saying you're going to fail, but if, if you happen to be, making some big moves in a couple of years, I'll be on one of them shows. And I'm like, that's fine. I'm never going to not welcome anyone. Everyone's welcome. If you, if you hate it on, on Chick Chick too, if you hate it on me, like, come on over, come check out these shows and come get inspired. Come, you know, hang out. Cause it is what it is. You know, it just makes me, I, I'm not a person that lets words hurt me. I'm like, I said more, more bad things to myself than anybody ever could. And I'm good. <laughs> I, I'm tough. I'm tough. And I, I, and I I'm grateful for my partner, Lou, who, you know, I always turn to and I, and I tell him immediately about, you know, maybe a situation that happened or, you know, people trying to kind of rain on my parade and he just, you know, he helps me stay focused and, and he really does believe in this. And that, that's like a key factor too. on like, you know, I, I couldn't have done any of this obviously without his, his idea, but also without his support and belief in, in this and myself. Hmm. Nice. I like talking about some of the, some of the rougher edges, because when, when people start doing something, if they expect that it's going to go well, and then it doesn't go well, they get really disillusioned. They're, they're sad. They, they pull back. They quit. But if we can let people know up front, yeah, the, there are things you can do. And, you know, sadly, people that you trusted, people that you competed against, they're going to, you know, maybe maybe they're not going to directly sabotage you, but not everyone that you expect to be supportive may be supportive. It's important that right. we acknowledge that. How have things changed from, let's say, the first event till now? I, I would imagine things have improved in some way, maybe maybe more efficient, maybe bigger, maybe you've made some changes. What's what's happened there? So our first event happened literally right before COVID. So everyone, like we had big names, we had big, like Girls from UFC, Bellator, mm. uh, top jujitsu practitioners, top black belts out there in our in our absolute for twenty five hundred dollars, and everyone like I couldn't believe the last minute signups for that. That was one of those things that lose like it's gonna happen. Just wait, just wait. And I'm like, okay, okay, because you know I also was head hunting all of the competitors for every division, and uh, 
So it was a last minute thing. It came together so well, even though we were setting up TVs and computers, like right before we started the show, ah, that was so hectic. But with each show we've learned so much more. And now we've separated a full tournament came my idea of having like an exclusive tournament where we essentially make, uh, we make the matches. So it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be 10, but I had so many girls ask to sign up and I'm like, I can't even, I can't even say no, this is so good. Uh, so we have 15, but uh, they're super fight. So they're perfectly matched, you know, belt, age, rank, as close as possible. Everybody agrees to it and they're yeah. battling for the crown. And that's kind of like an exclusive piece to that. So that it kind of gives people a break because you can't be competing every month. I mean, you can, I'd love to, we'd all love to, and some of us do, and that's great. But realistically, and especially with the fact that we're pushing the females, unless we're moving all over the country, it's hard for us to just stay in, in Florida and expect these girls to come out every, you know, 22nd of the month. Um, yeah. so it's kind of an opportunity to give them a little bit of a break and kind of put on a show for the people that want to put on a show, those people that want to win a crown. And again, we split the absolute for our exclusive events so that there's not going to be a one Oh five er mixed in with a two Oh five er for a, a large amount of money. Yeah, it happens. That, that, that does it. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah, the girls were the ones that were like, please, you have to separate the absolute. And I'm like, yes, ma'am. Here we go. Let's try it out. Wow. 100 pounds. Brutal. Brutal. That's, that's rough. Okay. What, what have you learned? Because most of our audience is never going to do anything close to what you're, you're working on, right? We've got, some, we've got some school owners. We've got plenty of martial artists, right? Everybody's a martial artist and pays attention to the show. Some of them grapple. Most of them probably do not. So what are you learning out of this that you can share with the audience that they can take and run with? What lessons, what learnings? Um, through everything, like I had said with the whole, you know, when people are getting you down or trying to rain on your parade, mm -hmm. that essentially, as long as you, you remain focused, I have like my own personal focus board. I have them on my phone. I have a, I have them in my room, just little things to help remind me like why I'm here. Cause everything isn't going to be easy. It's going to be tough. There's going to be people that don't want you to succeed. But as long as I have something to always remind me to kind of like have that light at the end of the tunnel to be like, no matter what, no matter how little effort that you're putting in, as long as you're putting effort in, like you're going to, you're going to move mountains with your goals. You're going to, you're going to get there. So that's something that I think that you can learn through, you know, running the tournament style through my martial art, through jujitsu and, and kickboxing. I like, I would like people to understand that like branching out and trying new things helps what you love the most. So I started out with kickboxing. That's something that like Muay Thai, I, I absolutely love that. But like I had stated in my head, it was bang, bang, pow, pow, pow. Jiu Jitsu. I didn't necessarily, oh, Jiu Jitsu is so awesome. I want to learn it. I knew I had to learn it. I got mm -hmm. there and I'm thinking so much more of bang, bang, pow, pow. I'm like, well, I got to grab my foot and their hand is there. And what do I have to, like, what moves do I have to do? And then it translated into my Muay Thai where it isn't bang, bang, pow, pow. It's very similar to Jiu Jitsu where I can set you up to make you get into a kick that I have to get into a combo that I want. And that chilled out my Muay Thai. So I think that <laughs> no matter what martial art or whatever that you're doing, branching out to similar things or other things can help you learn so much more about something that you originally love the most or that you would like to develop the most. Branching out is like one of those, the most amazing things that you can do. You don't, you don't mm. necessarily want to do it, but knowing that that's going to be so beneficial, just do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Big fan of cross training. I advocate advocate for it strongly in most cases. What what might you branch out to next? Um, I don't know. Maybe knitting. I'm just kidding. Uh, I, do, I do not see that for you. <laughs> no. In, um, in, I, unless unless you're sharpening those needles and you're doing. Something. Yeah. Right. Um. No, I really do. I think 
I would like to get more into my weaponry this year oh, and okay. upcoming. Like I, I do a little bit of uh, bow staff training. I do oh. a lot of like knife throwing, axe throwing. Again, like mm -hmm. I, I want to be my weapon, but at the same time, like if if even my man, he's a big, you know, six foot, 200 pound dude. If he wanted to hurt me, it doesn't matter what kind of martial art that I know. If, if mm -hmm. he's determined to, at some point, weapons are going to be something that are going to be beneficial for me to have you know i i don't personally like guns and stuff like that but i don't want to be stupid about them and i keep saying that but i never learn them you know and same with same with knife you know i can throw it all day long i can learn them i can feel comfortable around them so that if i ever do come in contact in a serious situation where there's a knife pulled on me my adrenaline won't fly through the roof because i'm so scared of it i can be like okay I can assess this weapon right now. So yeah. probably my next, and, and I have no idea how that's going to help any of my kickboxing or martial art or uh, jujitsu, but I know that something, something's going to click and everything's going to kind of make a connection. It's going to be a good thing. So that would be possibly my next thing. Right. Now you brought up nutrition, going to school for nutrition, working in nutrition. The nutritional needs of a two hour jujitsu class pretty steep. And so I would imagine as you immerse yourself deeper and deeper into this world, you were doing some at least self-experimentation, if not coaching other people on nutrition. You're smiling. So, so maybe I'm getting somewhere with it. So talk about that. Um, yeah. So essentially, you know, I learned the way that your nutrition affects your mind, right? And the mind, body, all that stuff goes together. And it's just stuff, stuff that we don't really consider. Like it, it kind of started for me there when I turn a box over and I'm like, man, somebody out there knows exactly what all of these ingredients are. And I'm sitting there mind blown that I can't do it. But then I'm like, oh, I'm gonna pour it in a bowl and, 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 and shove it down my body. And I'm like, none of this stuff that I can pronounce nor can I identify, I'm just, mm -hmm thrown in my body and, and when I have an attitude later because somebody didn't refill the toilet paper and maybe that has to do with the fact that like my body isn't nutritionally sound so it's not coming out of me nutritionally sound so uh you know I, I really got into breaking it all down reading a lot of books about like what what's the difference between me eating something that has a whole bunch of ingredients that I can't pronounce base or uh versus me eating some spinach that I can tell you exactly what ingredients are in there and how my body can break it down, right? So with that, I learned to clean up the diet. I learned about a lot of like a veganism and I haven't eaten meat since I, for 17 years now, a little over 17 years. I, I hate saying that kind of because I'm like, that means I started when I was one. No, I'm just kidding. 17 years is so grand. Um, but how long you know, have that you been was training? Uh, 10 years. Well, okay. 11 years, but my jujitsu is 10 years this year. I'm pretty stoked okay. about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I had originally stopped eating meat based, of, based off of uh, the cleanliness of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you, you pick up the training that you're doing and learning how many calories, even like I had said earlier in jujitsu, like you don't realize that sitting there and repping a triangle or you know a sweep is really burning a lot of calories and moving a lot of muscles joints and, and and parts of your body that you had no idea that you could ever move or feel mm -hmm. sore in those spaces right and so you have to learn how to replenish that if i have all of these little basic ingredients right i have to kind of supplement all of this big deficit that i've given myself through that and so eventually you know with my style diet and trying to understand the meat of uh, meat people's diets just to help with other clients um it's it's actually kind of cool that i can i can eat lots more food than i think than most people think based off of my training mm -hmm. i can eat lots more bad food too if i wanted to i am a fan of the top of a cupcake i can't do just icing it has to be the top of the cupcake I don't know what it is in my brain there. But, but, not, but not the bottom of the cupcake? It's got to have icing? 
I tried to, I've tried so many times to eat the bottom of, and I'm just like, why am I eating this like sponge? Blah, blah, blah. Um, but anyway, you're, you're so that kind of used to be. <laughs> you know, Publix cupcakes. has the best ones. Yeah. Oh, uh, we don't uh, have Publix well, up here. Oh yeah. Oh, sorry. Well, they're really good. That would be the almost moment for me. But anyway, uh, so I learned that, you know, like if I eat certain, certain foods, like the icing that when it breaks down in my body, I get acne, right? But if I properly train next to the foods that I'm eating that are bad, it will process that a little bit quicker and I won't have as bad acne and I can be well prepared with, you know, an excess amount of water to hydroponically mm. flush that out my system. And, and, oh, water isn't the only thing that flushes your system. What else can I learn? And it's like, throw that in the food that you're eating. It's very, very cool to learn all of the healthy vegetable lifestyle and, and be able to like match that up with, with my training. I obviously I've, you know, been an advocate to anybody, anybody that I've trained or trained with on the lifestyle that I have. I'm not sitting there being like, Hey, add Jeff. I'm also, I don't, I don't eat meat. I don't say that, but I, I add little tidbits about like, Oh, what kind of water, like how much water are you drinking? You always, if you meet someone, I feel like that should be appropriate. Hey, instead of saying, Hey, how you doing? It should be, Hey, how much water do you drink? Because that's gonna tell me a lot more about mm. your day than how how are you good? How much water are you drinking? None. <laughs> I only drink soda. Yeah. yeah. I uh we put out a book that that I, I coordinated a couple years ago now. And the and the first chapter, it's a health book, and the first chapter is all about like, look, you gotta get more water. Here are 30 reasons yeah. that you need more water, right? Yeah. And it's it's we're what 75 percent water 80 percent water somewhere in that it's mix just, right we're we're a, a little hydroponic system that anything that we do if you stop putting water in your system or any system that's hydroponically run it's not gonna run so why Falls are apart. we thinking that yeah yeah what so when i start falling apart i should not question what kind of sickness or illness i have i should question how much water intake that i'm doing versus all of the stuff that i'm putting in my body next to the water i'm putting in because again, like if I, if I, if I drink coffee, I'm going to drink a little bit more water next to my coffee so that I'm not, you know, immediately dehydrating myself and thinking, oh, I had a cup of water earlier. Nah, it doesn't work that but way. What do, you have... <laughs> what do you do when people say, I don't like the taste of water? What do you... I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is, the... it doesn't matter. Air doesn't okay, taste good either. You still yeah, need it. Uh, farts don't smell good, but they come out of my butt, and I have to do like I'm not sitting there. You know, it, it is what it is. I don't want to have to wipe my butt after I poo, but I have to because that's appropriate. That's what how life works. Right. You want you to work. You have to drink water. You can't. That's why when people, oh, I don't like vegetables. Okay, well then obviously you don't like being healthy. You don't like the goal. You don't want whatever goal you have right. that much then because if you can't. If you can't add a raw vegetable into your diet, then I don't think that you really want to lose five pounds. Like right. that, simple as that. The why, right? There it is again. The why has to be yeah. compelling enough for you to take the action. That's why I used to I used to have with all of my clients is, you know, you ask them what their goals are and you know, they explain it to you. And then you say, But why is that so important to you? Like mm. say your purpose. Because if you don't, if you don't come into like a realization as to why, why do I want to learn five or le uh, lose five pounds? Or why do I want to learn self-defense? Why am I so scared if it's never happened to me? Or, you know, s stuff like that. Like you have to have them emotionally connect to the, their purpose, their, their, what they want so that it actually is easier to happen. Kind of like, you know, I, I plan out all of, all of my goals and stuff like that out so I can see them in a way that if I'm having a bad day, it's easy to be like, but all I have to do is just a little bit of this to get to, you know, where I want to be, as opposed to not, mm. it's, it's so much easier to be like, if I did a little bit, I'm going to get what I want. I'm going to achieve my goal. And it's like, all right, I can convince myself to easily do that as opposed to just kind of floating around and being like, but I want to get there one day. And then you're like, why? Make sure you add the waves in there. <laughs> you got it. You got it. You got it. You got to do the wave. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> but yeah. What is, you know, I get the sense that you're pretty busy. You know, you mentioned, you mentioned you have a, have a child. And of course that always takes a lot of time. What is your training look like now? You know, you're doing a bunch of different things. So where do you fit it in and what, and how much? Um, at this point, 
for the new year, I have started a new regimen for myself because I did kind of let my own personal life get in the way. And it's, it's very easy to, my coach is so adamant about telling us that like, if you don't discipline your time, you're going to fill it up with a whole bunch of other junk. And by the time you want to get back to where, you know, you want in training, it's going to be difficult to kind of push that stuff aside. And it can be something real. Like, you know, I, I had something come up on Sunday that's going to take me out of training this entire week. And I'm like, that sucks so bad. But instead of me staying at home and being like, oh, this is so terrible. I'm like, I'm going to force myself to still dedicate the time that I already had dedicated to my training. And I'm going to be the photographer for that class. I'm still going to learn and maybe hop on the mat and try something. I'm still going to be there so that I can dedicate mm -hmm. my time and discipline to being there regardless of, you know, not being able to, to physically train. And I, and I think that stops a lot of people. You know, I, I've heard it before where if somebody can't do a full 30 minute to an hour workout, then they don't do it at all. I'm like, no, go do five push ups. go do a couple squats in the time frame of, I couldn't make it to the gym, yeah. do something within that to honor what you wanted so that the discipline is there. The motivation is there. It takes a simple one time of convincing yourself to, to wake up and do it, to mm -hmm. just do it anyway. You know? So I, I personally train, I do uh, the 12 o'clock Muay Thai and then I go three times a week to jujitsu at night. I'm trying to, especially with Chick Jitsu, branch out to other gyms and kind of visit the girls mm. that are competing for us and, and get to know them. Cause I don't want to just be another promoter. I want to be, I'm trying to make a real like camaraderie, a, a family of, of girls and mm. like really combine them. And it's working, but I want to be more, I want to be more into it. So I'm going to other gyms too in between this time to kind of hop in and roll with the girls, meet the girls train with other people super cool nice what are yeah. other women saying to you about this about what chick jitsu or yeah yeah about what you're doing and, and you know the fact that you're trying to make them a priority i mean or i should say I, are making them a priority not trying yeah. you're doing it uh i'm doing it um i get so many compliments all the time and it really does help me to you know move forward in times that are tough because you know it does happen and i think one of the cool things about social media and kind of like exposing reality instead of just taking smiling pictures all the time just being like hey man like i'm on social media today to to toot my own horn because i'm so proud of myself for showing up because i didn't want to and and i have a lot of these chicks that will see that and they'll they'll write to me and they'll be like you know i you motivated me to get up off the couch and go out there today and like I appreciate that. Or, you know, like, thank you so much for, for exposing yourself to be like a, a soccer or, you know, the, the not so good parts of the training life or just life in general. It's so cool. And then also too, I offer free training to any, you know, assault su survivors or whatever you want to call them. People that have, have, you know, been through domestic violence or similar stuff. I offer free training to them. And I post that often just as a reminder you know, just to say mm -hmm. that there's someone out there that's, I understand what you have gone through. And that's so important for you to to learn this skill. And I have had people write to me and they're like, oh, I'm, I didn't know that you did this. And I just want to, you know, thank you for being a person out there. You know, not necessarily that they're signing up for that, that session. They're just saying like, that's really incredible what you're doing. And I've seen other people start doing it too. I'm like, mm -hmm. as, as girls, it doesn't, you don't need to be a blue belt in jujitsu. You don't need to, or, you know, you don't have to be a high rank. If you learn something that's changed your life, it just takes one simple move to change someone's life. If I can teach a girl to unlock her, her arm from somebody's grasp. And yeah. that's, that's really intense. That can change a whole situation. Like I said, statistically proven, if you put up a little bit of a fight, they're going to second guess. And that's a big freaking deal <laughs> it is it really is all right so let's pretend we get together you know another 10 years from now you've been training jiu-jitsu 20 years chick jitsu is 10 plus however many years old and i say hey jeff what's happened since we last talked what would you hope you were telling me i would hope to have branched out to many different gyms to help them open a women's only program 
I would like to see us helping out like scholarships for women to get into these programs. I would like to see girls out there on, on different top name cards being accredited to being a chip jitsu mm. fight winner, uh, belt holder, super or, uh, absolute winner multiple times. I want to be that, that brand that's like, you want her in your gym or you want her seminar because she's a chick jitsu absolute four times what you know that kind of stuff i i want to be not just any you know side side event that happens i want to be something that's you know an accredited mm. type of event i love it i think you'll do it i hope you do it i know i'll do it there ain't no Keep thinking that's, that's, it's been, it's been that's, thought of <laughs> yes yes um one more question before I kind of turn it to you as we start to wind down. Uh, completely out of the realm of martial arts. I want to bring it back to nutrition for a moment. Three foods that you think people need to eat more of. Ooh. I think that people need to eat more spinach, mm -hmm. more huevos, eggs, Mm -hmm. And I would say, uh, ah, that'd be a tough one on the last one. Those are, those are my top two. Can I do two and then water is a food now? Sure, sure. <laughs> water can identify as a food. Why not? Yes. All right. Uh, how do people find out more? Website, social media, email, anything like that we can share. So uh, at Chick Jitsu is where we are on everything, on YouTube, on Instagram. We don't have Twitter, not our thing. We're not we're not talkers like that. Oh, am I still on here? Yeah. I, I low battery okay. mode. Sorry. Okay. Um, but yeah, so we have chickjitsu.com. That's all of that, and then Jeff Amoy. You can look me up. I'm always shouting Chick Jitsu out. That's what I do for you know my whole life is is find ways to make chip jitsu like a big thing. Great, great. And I hope people will reach out. I hope people will follow. We'll have all that in the show notes, of course. And what do you, how do you want to leave this today? What are your final words to the audience? My my final words to the audience. Not not, not your last words. Not I like, know. I had know. to be specific. It's, it's, a, it's a little it's a little morbid. It's a, your 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 last words in this context, at least for today? <laughs> uh, I would say to anybody listening right now is that if you have something in your life that you can be passionate about, do it. Like find any way to wake up and make yourself make that happen. A lot of times, especially as we grow older, we kind of fall into this rhythm of, I gotta work, I gotta pay my bills, I gotta take care of the kids, the kids have you know all of these things. And we kind of forget about ourselves. And we start pouring from a very empty cup and it it's, it turns into, you know, we even have something like seasonal depression where you start kind of getting down. It is a fact, you know, to see, to think that someone's going to be happy always. It's developing how to be a, a tough person, how to follow, you know, what makes, what makes you set on fire all the time, what makes making life happy easy. You know, something that comes naturally to you. Don't forget about stuff that makes you smile. If it's something silly, you know, let it let it be a part of your life. Don't let it go. Um, and don't ever let anybody talk down to you or say that something's not going to happen or that you're doing it wrong just because you're changing the game. Do it anyway. Make, make sure that you always have something out there, something to look at, something to remind yourself why you're doing whatever you're doing so that you can have a smile on your face. When I think back on today's episode, the word that keeps coming to mind, she actually used it several times herself, firecracker. Man, this is a high energy person. I, I had to step up to meet where her energy was at. And that took some work for me and I appreciated the challenge. Jeffa, thanks for coming on. Thanks for being so honest and so real with everything you talked about. And thanks for doing the work that you're doing. I, I value it greatly. And I'm sure I'm not alone. Audience, check out Chick Jitsu. Give them a follow. Check out all the stuff that Jeff had talked about. And if you're in the Florida area, maybe you can make it to one of these events. Or heck, 
Maybe you're not, but you're headed there. Or maybe you just want to go support. All, I think, would be greatly valued and appreciated. If you want to go deeper on this show, this episode, any of the others, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you want to show your love for the things that we're doing for the martial arts world, go to whistlekick.com. Don't remember. Don't remember. Don't forget. I want you to remember. No. <laughs> we're going to keep it. I, I like keeping these intros and outros real. Don't forget that we offer consulting for martial arts schools. I enjoy working with businesses and I work with businesses of all kinds, but I specifically like working with martial arts businesses. And I bring the martial arts philosophy and the whistle kick philosophy, this connect, educate, and entertain these decisions made out of integrity and joy to help grow these businesses. I have an incredible success rate. It can't get any better. It's literally a hundred percent. So if you want your school to have more, more students, more revenue, more profit, better culture, whatever it is, or all of those things, you can reach out to me, or you can also check out more behind the scenes at whistlekick.com. I only won't work with one school in a particular area. So if you're in a populated area and you say, you know what, uh, maybe I'll grab Jeremy's help and Whistlekick's help before one of my competitors does. Keep that in mind. We're also booking seminars. It's a rolling booking. So if you'd like to have me or me and one of the other folks on the Whistlekick team, come teach your students or just folks in your area, reach out. We can make it happen. It's not something we try to make a lot of money on. We make money in other ways. It's more the connection part, right? Connect, educate, entertain. Actually, we check all three boxes when we do seminars. My email is jeremy at whistlekick.com. Our social media is at whistlekick everywhere you might think of. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.